Allow us to move now to uh, Chetna Sinha, uh, the founder of Mandeshi Foundation and Bank. Um, Chetna, um, allow me maybe to ask you um, here, and it's a long question, I'm sorry to, uh, to be uh, rambling there, but um, the financial inclusion of women can lead to women's empowerment. Uh, given your work in rural India, Please share your views on how the public and private sectors can invest in increasing the availability and access to gender responsive financial services that cater to the public and specific needs of women entrepreneurs. Thanks. Uh, I'm very uh, glad to be here and I'm very, really thankful uh, to UN Women and India Mission to give me an opportunity to share the lessons I have learned about financial inclusion, that how women are looking at financial inclusion and what in, they are offering some solutions, both to the private sector and the government policies. And it is very important that how do we listen to them. So I would just like to share some lessons while working in the villages of India when I've set up the bank and set up the business school radio, which is all operated by women, and how are they looking at financial inclusion? And so I would like to share a story of one lady, Parvati. She is selling fruits on the road. She came to the bank and she said, I want a loan. And she said, I don't have collateral, no land, but I want a loan and I cannot, I don't have a salary, so I cannot repay in the monthly salary. So then we said that, okay, then what do you, how do you want the loan? So she said, I will take loan every day and repay every day. So we designed the overdraft facility, cash credit for these women. When I say that, <laughs> when I say that, what I also want to emphasize that in India, we have Jandan accounts. As you mentioned, uh, Madam, uh, our res uh, uh, respected Madam Kumboj, that uh, we have a Jandan account and Jandan account also has the overdraft facility. So when we provided the overdraft facility, we also provided the debit card to our women. These are the debit card which our women carries. They don't know to read and write, but they use it. And when they use it, you know what do they say? They say that, you know, we said you will use the PIN number with your debit card and then you will withdraw the cash what you have got in loan. And how do you do? You can use your money. But our women said that, you know, not only PIN number, we want something more. So we said we will do the financial literacy, but use the PIN number. So they said, no, what about biometric? So then we said that is a great idea, that use the biometric and that can be adopted with the card. So we did that. And at that time, we got the private sector to support us in the technology. Because you have a card, you have a biometric, and I also want to tell everyone that India has the UPI platform where more than 200 billion transactions takes place, and I'm very proud of it. And I would say, that when women use this with biometric, you know what they said? That anybody can steal my pin number, but nobody can steal my thumb, right? And I would tell in, like to tell in Hindi also, ki mera pin number to koi bhi chura lega, lekin mera angutha to koi nahi chura sakta hai. With this, what I want to share with you is that whatever product we design, for women, it is very important, listen to them. And when they suggest the solution, implement them. And they are not difficult, they are simple. It's a matter that we should listen to them. And what, do, what, are, what were they saying? While using the card, they were saying that we do not want just access to finance, we want control on finance. We don't want your loan products, we are not salary earner, we are daily, we are doing business daily, earning daily. 
So listen to our loan product and we listen to them. And I would just like to say that in inaugural session also I said that I've learned from women one thing and that is never give poor solutions to poor people. They are smart. <laughs> And with this, thank you. With this, I would say that, you know, as you mentioned while uh, asking the question, that what happens when the private capital comes in and government policy comes in? And I would say that if private capital and government policies, if they listen to women, women-led development comes, but that women-led development not only address poverty, but that talks about the prosperity. And with that, I would just like to share that I would, I'm so proud that I'm here today talking with you, but these women have found the solutions and they have created the wealth for themselves. So when Madam talked about the ownership of property and ownership of housing, I'm proud to share with you that so many of our women, they have taken loans, but they today own their house and own the property. Thank you so much. Chetna, the, um, uh, the General Assembly Hall did shake yesterday when you uh, took that podium because you were the first woman after five men. <laughs> and, um, and it was a much-awaited uh, moment um, for all of us. And, and you did shake the room again today. Um, listen to the women. No poor solutions for poor women. Don't aim only to end poverty, but aim for prosperity. And technology should be in the service of financing for gender equality. Thank you. My name is Gretel Cotero. I'm from Mexico. I hope you understand me. My English is not the best, but I'm trying. In my country, the young say, uh, be young and don't be revolutionary is a biologic contradiction. They said uh, Salvador Allende in my university, University of Guadalajara. And I say that because my question is how to do India in try to including the young women in the public politics? Because I understand and I know, uh, for example, we say, he say no poor solutions for poor women, and we need to include the young women. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gretel. My English is not perfect as well. Uh, I think very few of us here has English as their first language, so your English was perfectly clear and understandable. Who would like to, that, uh, to answer that question? How can we also have a special focus on including young women in policy making when it comes to financial inclusion? Can we specify what is the young women mean? The ambassador is asking you, what do you mean by young women? I would just like to, uh, um, like, can I respond? Yes. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, okay. you know, it's very interesting. Like when we say that, how do you uh, include young women or how, what are the issues which young women would have, right? So, I mean, I'm just like sharing, we have a special program of working with young women, young girls who are in high schools, who are doing graduations, right, those girls, or maybe who have not got an opportunity to go to school. So how do you get them into that whole mainstream? I would again give you an example of a girl. <coughs> when we are working with them on digital financial literacy, we saw that many girls would like to save. You know why? <coughs> because they want to pay fees. fees for their graduation, and why they have to save, but boys do not have to save. Because parents, if they don't have enough money, they would invest in boys, but they may not invest in girls. 
So it's very important. And I would say when you're working with young girls, it's also very important that what are my goals? Where I have to go? So have a digital financial literacy, have a financial literacy, skill them, professionally work with them, work and also they have their goals. They know very clearly that we want to study, we want to do jobs. And it's not that I'm a girl, I will study, marry. No, I will do job, I will earn, I will have a salary. So I liked your question, actually. So and when you're working with girls, it's very important that how, where are you going to invest your work, your money, your, of course you are not very rich, but still every month, every pesa matters and where you are going to invest, right? Thank you. That's right. My name is Ritu Clementi, and I'm from Australia with a grassroots nonprofit called the Girls Leadership Network. But my question is broader. Um, and there's just in particular, there's so much innovation happening in the fintech space with major digital leaders like Apple, Facebook, Google. Um, what do you want to see them focus on, even specific payment initiatives besides designing for women? to empower and lift um, women. And this could go to better than cash. This can go to Chetna Sinha. This could go to the person that um, also talked about capital markets. But these are platforms that we all live on every single day in, around the world. Very concrete to the point, Chetna. <clears throat> so, uh you know, when we talk about the payments, then we think that it's just we are doing transactions, right? That paying the transaction, so I take. But I, what we have seen with our women, and I will also again share another story. This is about Sunita. She's a potter woman. She makes potter, I mean, different crafts and create these uh, jugs and everything with, uh, and with the earth, with the dirt, clay. And she wants to sell it, but she's in a village, right? So in India, we have this open network digital commerce, ONDC, which is a digital public infrastructure where you can sell your products. Now, where she's selling her products, she's sitting in the village, but selling it. This is no new. Everybody knows, right? Amazon and everything. But the, 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 the speciality of the ONDC is that in Amazon, you get from the big city, product from the big city to the villages. Here it is other way around. The villagers are sending to the big city. But what I'm trying to say is answering your question that how can she, without going to the bank, can get the loan by doing this business? You know how? On that platform, she will have a digital history of the, her transaction. On that platform, she will do purchase financing. Banks are there on the platform. So based on her history, she does not have a credit score, but she can get the loan and she doesn't have to go to the bank. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not just FinTech only as a fin financial transaction, but it brings the embedded finance where on these platform, people, those who come in, those who do not have, those who are not on Amazon, but the rural people, they can come on these platform and get the facility of these embedded finance. And it's very important that even women who do not have collateral, they can get the cash flow loans. So I would say that this is how there is a beauty and potential and power in these digital public infrastructure, which India is creating, and we are very proud of that. I'll just